Hello, welcome to the first uh, Faulty Projector live review. So we are starting our Tarkovsky film challenge that we talked about in the uh, podcast, where we're trying to watch all of Andre Tarkovsky's films in one month. Uh, and we've just seen Ivan's childhood. So we're going to sit we down and talk about it. Uh, Rob, I think it's good if we start off with the good stuff and then we can uh, end with any bad stuff or criticisms we've got. Okay, so, okay. Gen generally, what was your feelings about it? And then, and then give me a good point. Okay, yeah, no, uh, I, as was made clear, if you listen to our podcast before this, where we talked about doing this challenge and trying to watch all the Tarkovsky films, I haven't actually seen any Tarkovsky films before this. He's a kind of massive blind spot for me. So watching Ivan's Childhood, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I think it's not necessarily going to be representative of what we see later on in his work. Yeah. I mean, we did both also watch a short kind of a, I think it was a DVD feature documentary, wasn't it? That we mm -hmm. saw, I can't remember the name of it, but we did watch one that gave um, the film and, and Tarkovsky some historical context in early sixties, Russia uh, and, and, and within kind of um, Moss film and the kind of Russian studio system at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And it seemed from that video as well to support the idea that maybe this isn't representative of his later work. Uh, in some ways, I think it's possibly a more conventional film. Uh, and then it seems like there's stylistic things about it as well that, that possibly aren't going to be there later on. Um, but for for, uh, for a starter into Tarkovsky, I thought it's brilliant because um, for one thing, it's only an hour and a half long. I think all the other, <laughs> I think the next one we're watching, I think the next one we're watching is three hours and 20 minutes. Or yeah. Minute. yeah. So this, this was a nice, gentle, uh, nice, gentle introduction. Um, and uh, I think it seems to, and again, I, I could be talking about my else here because I, I haven't watched the later ones yet, but I, I feel like this is possibly a bridge of a slightly more straightforward mainstream movie and some of his stylistic flourishes and devices and ideas uh, to, again, to sort of ease us, ease us on in to his, to his oeuvre. Um, I yeah. really liked it. I found it, um, it alternated for me between um, bits of kind of extremely experimental bits to bits that were much more conventional uh, bits that were kind of very dark and very harrowing to bits that almost felt like they could be in something like the, um, the 500 blows or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, it very much felt to me like we, uh, a film of its time because it was 1962 and you can see traces, not so much of the things that were going on in Hollywood at the time, but certainly the things that were going on elsewhere in world cinema. To yeah, world cinema. But like, um, uh, you could definitely see sort of French New Wave influence in there, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, touches as well of, of people like Kurosawa. I was really um, impressed at the beginning by how during the because the film's got dream sequences and then kind of more grounded more static more more heavily kind of traditionally blocked and staged sequences that are like real life and then these dream sequences uh, and during those dream sequences like the one at the beginning i was really impressed by how mobile and fluid the camera was there were like crane shots there was um there was a bit at the beginning that i think was even like uh like from a plane or something uh mm -hmm. and i wasn't expecting that kind of thing i wasn't expecting especially for this guy's first film um and i didn't really like admittedly i don't really know the context necessarily of the budgets and things in early 60s russian cinema what they were sort of doing at that point more generally so i was sort of um blown away by some of that some of the the stylistic flourishes um the production values i guess for, for want of a better term um so yeah i was really impressed by it from a technical level i thought the uh the child actor was brilliant i don't have his name in front of me right now unfortunately uh do you know <laughs> no i don't know okay no. cool well the child i refer to him simply as the child actor no the child ivan, ivan. Yeah. Ivan. Um, I've, I thought the titular the kid, Ivan. Yeah, the titular Ivan. The kid who played Ivan, I thought was fantastic. He has certainly later in the film as well some really good, like close up, cr like crying shots with his like dirty face. And he's just, he's really good, that kid. Um, I've, again, without having Wikipedia open and stuff in front of me, as I would during the podcast, I, I don't know if he went on to, to be a star of the Russian, Russian screen, but uh, he was, he was very good in this. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I, I all round, I really enjoyed it. I liked, I liked the kind of bleakness. We're obviously going to go kind of full spoilers here, right? Because we're, we're talking uh, about the yes, whole movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's just say for the next like few minutes, um, yeah, when I, okay. I'll do a, I'll do a little summary of how I felt, and then yeah, from like two minutes onwards, we'll, we'll go into spoilers. Okay, cool. Um, well, I'll just leave it there then and say I liked, I liked the ending. I like, um, yeah, I've, I've said more than one good point about it yeah so, yeah, so I'll, yeah. Move, I'll move on to you <laughs> you did a classic i just, 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 I just <laughs> gotta go bit by bit to the entire thing i like from the second everything. minute when <laughs> so um but of yeah. course that brings us to the third act exactly yeah yeah and the ending i thought was great <laughs> yeah. and now uh, we're exactly. done <laughs> yeah yeah, no, so the, the YouTube video that you alluded to um, was by Vida T. Johnson, and I stumbled yeah. upon that when I was looking for a, a good review or analysis of the film, and I highly recommend it. She's like a, a scholar of Tarkovsky. Mm. She's written a book about him, um, and she's a university professor in Russian uh, language and cinema. Uh, that video is great if you want a background in, in his work, uh, in his beginnings, and uh, the film in particular as well. Uh, and like, I like what you said as well about it being like representative of what was going on in European cinema at the time, because it, it won the Golden um, Lion, didn't it? Yeah. Venice, um, which is quite telling, like his first film, and he wins the Golden Lion, like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, and, and Bergman as well, saying he's the best yeah. filmmaker currently alive. It's, or it's an amazing debut feature, isn't it? Like, yeah, for a definitely. debut feature, like, okay, it's it's odd because uh, Citizen Kane's also a debut feature, so it's not like unprecedented. But no. like the... Uh, He's so accomplished, so confident, so kind of confrontational in his style, yeah, yeah. Uh, in in lots of ways that that it comes out of the really gate astounding. swinging. He really does. He really does. <laughs> like it's a cliche. And but it was yeah. it was interesting on that video you were just talking about. Um, she mentions how uh, he saw this because he took over this project that was already going on, and and he wasn't something. Yeah, he was that's in, what I was going to say from the beginning. And yeah. it's interesting about that the fact that. Um, he saw this more as a kind of way to show himself off technically. And it really is technically in lots of ways a, a masterclass, this film. Yeah. And I think that's why, like you said, it, it's probably not going to be um, emblematic of his further, later work because this was kind mm. of a gun for hire thing that he manages to twist, like you say, by his use of style and yeah. his technical abilities into a calling card for himself and into something yeah. that was more interesting for him. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I also really enjoyed it. Um, and like one of the things that really struck me the most was actually the opening scene. Like I love all of the dream sequences. I'm a sucker for a good bit of surrealism and a good dream sequence mm. and stylism like that. But the opening, I was like on the edge of my seat and like uh, Laura, my girlfriend who I watched it was, was kind of an, almost annoyed at my level of enthusiasm. You know, when you're like overly enthused about something <laughs> and the other person's getting like, all right, chill out, yeah. you're kind of ruining it. Uh, it was a bit like that because I was just like, oh my God, now he's kind of flying and oh my, look at that angle and how did they do okay. that? And I absolutely in, loved that. I'm opening. interested to hear sort of where it fell short for you because I know that you mentioned you had kind of mixed feelings about it or some reservations. And I, I'll, I'll say right now, like, I wait, 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 wait. Don't, let's, yeah, okay. Let's keep, the, let's keep the people, you know, waiting. Let's keep the people waiting. Let's keep positive, and we'll hit, we'll hit the negatives at the end. Well, I was just—I don't really have any negatives, so that's well, why wow. I'm really interested on yours. Okay, okay, okay. I don't have yeah. lots, but I've got a couple. Okay. Um, but yeah, also I really love the use of sound in, in the film. It's relatively experimental for the time. Mm. It's not all like diegetic as far as I can tell. I mean, a lot of it is dream sequences and it's not only dream sequences. There's an amazing scene where he's kind of going crazy uh, when he's alone in the bunker, which mm. was an excellent scene. And they play with time uh, and like reverberations of historical events really well in that scene. Um, and the music, the sound in that scene is really intense, but also obviously not really occurring in that moment. But there's loads of other occurrences of that throughout. And just the sound in general is really, really intense and interesting. And the music I really liked because sometimes it's kind of like classical for the time period and kind of sweet and nice when it needs to be, uh, like at the beginning or with some of the scenes of the, um, the head nurse. But also at other times it's quite, again, like a bit experimental, a bit mm. weird uh, and oppressive. And I really liked that. Um, what else really stood out for you? I liked um, a lot the – you can tell that he's kind of throwing everything at the wall in terms of the style because some of it doesn't quite mesh, I guess, within the film. But yeah. the um, – uh, I, I love, for example, the two first-person sequences of the woman, Masha, uh, running through the woods. There's one that's like uh, where she's running away from a guy whose advances she doesn't 
really want. And she um, and and the running away then in first person, you just get these shots of a camera, like a really Paul Greengrassy, you know, shaking cam <laughs> running through the woods. And we know, um, we've seen you, Paul yeah. Greengrass. We see you. <laughs> but, you. but you get these shots of this camera. You know, the camera's just running through the woods, and it's kind of her first person. And it's she's uh, it's kind of Blair Witchy. You know, she's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> and she's kind of it's the camera's kind of bobbing around through the trees. Um, and then you get a kind of a callback to that, like a scene later when she has a nicer interaction with a guy who I don't really know why she likes him because he seems like a dweeb, but she meets this other guy Bro. and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. but you know the guy's talking about, right? Why did she go right? for the hunky alpha she go for the... But she, you know, but then this other guy comes up and goes, oh, we took exams together, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and then... And, and then, then yeah, Kalina. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, and then he gets sand kicked in his face by a big, muscly yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, <laughs> he uh, basically, she has this nice interaction with a guy who's not a potential sexual predator like the other man before. <laughs> and then, and then they kind of repeat that um, first person in the woods thing. But now it's more of a waltz. Now the camera's more sort of dancing through the trees. Now the music is 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 more kind of um, balletic, you know. And the, and so it was interesting as well. And and, and I guess um, that the, the, as as it says in that small documentary, and as I thought, kind of watching it at the time, um, the sequences with that woman—they have nothing to do with Ivan. They're kind of you could cut them from the film, and you wouldn't really lose anything. But yeah. um, I really. I really liked those those two moments, the the kind of the counterpoint of the 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 running away through the woods with the anxiety and then doing it again with different music in a different context. Mm -hmm. And now it's suddenly free and playful and dancey, you know. I, I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, yeah. Um something else that I really appreciate as well is that his use of space. Like he's constantly got things going on in the foreground, midground, mm. and background, or things that start in the foreground and come to the the background, or vice versa. Yeah. Um, there's so many moments like that where I was just like, wow, like why don't people do this more? You know, well, like, his films is is the film on. is very obviously like blocked, very theatrically, right? Yeah. People are yeah. hitting their mark and they're moving onto certain sort of blocks, uh, where in a way that certainly a lot of modern films don't necessarily do as much. You know, people have a bit yeah. more freedom to walk around the, 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 the kind of the, I guess the frame, you know? Yeah. But there was, with the, I was going to talk about the blocking though, because even within yeah. that blocking that you say is quite stagey and it's true. And once they hit their mark, they stay there. There's still quite a lot of movement though. And again, mm. there's quite a lot of movement throughout through 3d space, which I really mm. appreciated. And so much, you know, beautiful fluid camera movement to go along with that as well. And it's um, interesting because although he apparently has much longer single takes in his later films, it did stand out to me how long, you know, how few cuts there are, you know, yeah. because during the sequences, particularly not so much in the dream sequences, but during the sequences where it's like the the soldiers in the in the kind of the bunker with the kid, they are often just kind of sitting around a table or sitting around a room and the camera will just stay there and if the camera does move then it might just be kind of a dolly just kind of yeah. um you know track along a bit or someone will walk into the foreground or out the frame or along the back like you say all the blocking um and it, it I kind of um that could feel very stagey it could feel very much like a film play and it doesn't um, no, it doesn't. It, I it think maybe it's partly, partly, yeah, it feels really cinematic and partly also, I guess, as a, uh, like you were talking about, there's a lot of contrasts in this film. And I think also because it contrasts so clearly with the, the dream sequences mm. that it doesn't feel too stagey like that. Um, another individual scene that I really wanted to talk about because I just really liked it was the the scene when Ivan runs away and he ends up in that village with the, yes. kind of, the guy with the PTSD yeah, and he's yeah. like waiting for his wife. And that scene was just amazing like yes. it felt like we were watching some sort of post-apocalyptic like drama like the road or something and yeah that, obviously that famous shot when he like goes into the like husk of a burnt out house and there's mm. all these weird sharp uh bits of wood kind of framing yeah the edge of the, almost the frame yeah yeah almost cabinet of dr Cagliari exactly of, uh, exactly yeah. i was German eating that shit up yeah, yeah. Man, i was like <laughs> mm, yummy yeah um, i, I love that there was also some kind of really nice like um dark humor in that scene like i like the the old man hiding behind his door when the soldiers <laughs> came along even though he's got no house like yeah. it's just a door frame and then at the end where he locks the door and yeah. it's amazing that tarkovsky has the trust in the audience to get that that's funny um 
because in that sequence when he locks the door, it's a close up of the door, so you don't see that there's no walls, yeah. and, and yeah. you hear the locking, and you know he doesn't you only know that there are no walls because of all the previous establishing shots. So he kind of trusts in that moment that we're kind of aware of how bizarre that is without him flagging it at the time, if, you, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And there's, there's a lots of like absurd, absurdism in that scene. Yeah. Remember, isn't there like the thing with the, the cockerel on the, on the chimney, the, the here's a nail. No, that's not the right nail. You know, like yeah, all that stuff yeah. was really, really interesting. And it was nice as well to just get a bit of a broader perspective on the conflict at large. Um, so no, I really, really, really appreciate that scene. Um, just briefly as well, I wanted to talk about the framing in general, like, mm. and the the way that light is used in the film because it's it's used quite a lot and quite extensively. And one of the particular moments that I really liked is, I mean, it's kind of a, a classic by now, but there's that really beautiful scene again. I think it's in the bunker where they use the mirror, um, like image of the person that he's meant to be talking to instead mm. of actually directly looking at the person. There's a lot of stuff like that where they're really using the framing in a clever, intelligent way and playing with light. Uh, which I just really appreciate. Like, I guess a lot of this technical stuff sounds really wanky, but when you watch it, it looks really beautiful and it really it really changes um, the way you see the film. It adds to the atmosphere a lot. Anything else that you wanted to talk about in the in the positive? Um, well, I, as I say, I'm pretty much fully positive up here. I have yeah. to stray off something. I actually have notes for this, which you know, for the podcast, I Ooh. think it's apparent, apparent to listeners that generally during the podcast, that's not the case. <laughs> um, so, so I do have I do have lots of sort of stray observations, but nothing nothing else uh, that really other than that, that we haven't already covered. Um, I uh, just some more things that I wanted to mention. Just really liking. Mm. Um, Scene you mentioned where he's kind of having hearing all those voices under torchlight in the bunker and reading all the um uh the um the scrolls graffiti, graffiti is probably not the right word but scrolls. it's like scrolls yeah the, the scrolls on the wall that have been done by prisoners and the fact that it says um the bit where he's reading a bit that says um there's none of us in this room that are over 19 and we're all going to get taken outside in now and shot Avengers, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I found that really, really haunting a really macabre, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I, I think that's one of the images from the film and the ideas from the film that's going to stay with me uh, when I kind of um, forget everything about the film in a few days because of my adult mid thirties brain. Like there are a few key images and moments that are going to, resonate and i think things like that that's an idea that that's kind of haunting and because it's based in fact as well it's it's a uh, it, you know they're in an actual um he's supposed to be actually at uh, a real life death camp at that point that was uh, in yeah. russia uh, yeah. and and it's it's just another bit in the film that sort of reminds you of the the, the very real historical context of what's going on in a way that's you know unsettling um and uh the there's a scene and this is again a really this isn't really anything as an observation but i was reminded uh when they're running through the woods near the end and there are all the flares going off it mm -hmm. reminded me so much of that recent scene in uh, 1917. 1917 yeah me uh, too. And i don't know whether that was the direct callback in 1917 or, or whether roger deakins and sam mendes had seen this and and whatever but 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 it was so interesting in that context you know having yeah. seen that other film recently um it's like poetry yeah. you know robert it echoes <laughs> it's like it rhymes exactly yeah. uh so <laughs> yeah i'm interested to hear your reservations and i'm interested let's let's go into spoiler territory now let's talk no holds barred about the whole film right or do you want to go into your reservations more vaguely first uh, well, one of my re uh, reservations is about the ending, so we can go straight I, I there figured. if you want. But I wanted to just do a bit of a bridge as well and yeah. say, like, on the positive side still, I obviously, we didn't really talk about the themes and stuff and the atmosphere too much, but, like, I love the theme of, like, Innocence Lost. And I like the fact that the film, there's, like, a sadness to it, but also a beauty. I think that balance is really nicely done. Mm. Um, and I do like the elliptical quality of the film and some of the harsh difficult editing choices that it makes. Like for example, after the first dream sequence, we cut then to um, that like corporal or sergeant character. And we're like, who is this guy? What's going on? Where are we? I liked that. Mm. However, one of the negatives okay. I would say is that sometimes the lack of narrative clarity, narrative clarity actually worked against it and kind of annoyed me a little bit. Like when he first runs away and they seem determined to take him to military school. And then there's a couple of scenes with him not in 
and then it cuts back to him in the bunker. I was like, what? What's going on? Is he not? Yeah. Uh, it's it's interesting. It wasn't a big deal, but it, it was interesting hearing because because again in that in that short documentary we watched, uh, which uh, we'll we'll share a link to on our uh, well in the comments to this video, we can put yeah, a definitely. link right to that because uh, it's worth watching. In that, she mentions um, that moment of us of them not establishing that he wasn't going to military school, and I found that interesting because I'd had the same thought watching the film, and I kind of sometimes these days if. I, I think I tend to give films the benefit of the doubt and I kind of think, oh, well, maybe I just didn't get something <laughs> yeah, there. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And then to yeah, the hear her put out, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, no, that was just just ignored. It was yeah. the kind of thing that if Cinema Sins were doing an Ivan's childhood, <laughs> like that would be a plot hole. That'd be definitely, a major plot definitely. hole, wouldn't it? It'd be like, yeah, they're setting the movie sucks school, now. Then... <laughs> Yeah, a hundred reasons why Ivan's childhood sucks. Ninety nine um, of them are just that scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was odd. I mean, it's but it's interesting as well how movies work because you you fill in the gaps for things yeah. like that. You yeah, know? no, totally, like, totally. After a minute or two, yeah. I was like, okay, so I guess yeah. he just didn't, and they we're not going to find out why. But yeah. there was a couple I, I of kind of assumed, me out. You yeah, know, the movie. I kind of assumed the reason why was because it was he was always going to run away again. So they figured, what's the point? Yeah. Either yeah. that or the fact that it's it's stated several times that those soldiers love the kid and yeah. uh, they, and I think they presumably kind of want his, him around. Yeah, and I think they liked his attitude of like, I'm my yeah. own boss. I'll do what I want. Like, I'm not going to military school. You can try and take me, but I'm coming yeah. back. You know, yeah. I think they respected that in some way. So um, I kind of I kind of got why he was still there without a scene where they say, okay, you can stay. So 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 in one on one hand, it's like, is that a mistake? Is that an oversight? And on the other hand, I'm like, well, or is it just the fact that Tarkovsky doesn't feel the need to hold our hands and put what what he sees as an unnecessary scene, you know? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. Uh, I, I so so uh, yeah, while it didn't sort of bother me or take me out of it, I can see that as a a possible flaw. Yeah. Like. And then yeah. we can move on to the ending as well, if you want. So um, I don't know. I've got no way of proving this because um, it wasn't brought up in that kind of mini documentary that we watched. Mm. And I thought she was going to talk about it. I've got no way to prove that the film ending with the end of World War Two was kind of like mandated by the studio. But it felt like it was. I didn't need it to end with that like cheerful note of, yay, the war's over. Um, and I didn't really like the use of documentary footage. I didn't mind too much. Um, with the like violence level of seeing the dead bodies and stuff because fuck Goebbels, etc. But um it just took me out of the movie again. I was like, oh, okay, so the film's over and we're just gonna watch some documentary footage and then go to credits. Okay, fine. But then it That's, doesn't. Yeah, I mean then it, it goes back it, to the film again. Yeah. I was like, oh. But I th I thought that was necessary because we're in full spoilers territory now, right? Obviously. Oh, clearly, yeah. I just yeah, told them the yeah. ending. So. Okay. <laughs> so uh Ivan dies. Yeah. Uh and I think the only way he, they're ever going to find out about that really convincingly is, is looking through files after the war's over. So for me, that segue made sense. He wanders off into the woods. Mm -hmm. They don't see him again, hear from him again. Clearly they lose touch. So when they get to Berlin and, and they, they liberate Berlin and they, they come or, or take over Berlin, depending on your on the Soviet <laughs> Union, um, they, they, uh, um, they're going through the files and, and the guy's frantically looking to find evidence of what happened to Ivan, right? Yeah. And uh, that to me, that made sense as an ending. To me, it made yeah. sense that that would have to come kind of after the war. I guess I guess if you wanted to and you, you didn't want to use that archive footage and go to winning the war and all that, you could have them find, um, you know, those files or something in another... Yeah, maybe they just city take over. Or exactly, I don't they know. take over nearby city and, but, uh, and to me, or, yeah. Oh, to, to, oh, no, but I was just gonna say, to me, that didn't take me out of the movie. I was intrigued yeah. by that 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 device and and the idea of being in those archives and and looking through the folders. I really liked the um, kind of the cheap final suspense moment of the folder falling through the floorboards and then him having to go and get it. And if it it doesn't like lead to well. anything. Like, I like, like but those it's moments, just, yeah, but it's it just, just came a nice, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I liked, um, liked, you know, this is not a nice thing, but I thought I appreciated, I, I, I admired the way that um, they portrayed, uh, portrayed the way that Ivan was led to his hanging by just shooting yeah. these empty spaces that were now derelict yeah. and having the voiceover of the German officers like marching him to, to be hanged. And it was, it felt to me almost as if 
that was the soldier constructing the events from the report he had read mm, and then looking mm. at I, I thought that was really cleverly done. So I really liked the ending. I, I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying about the um the the archive footage in Berlin. On one hand, I think in a more conventional movie that stuff's necessary because you're moving to another location. So you need to have those establishing shots and sets of um you know, post-war Berlin are probably very expensive compared to shows and some clips yeah, of post-Berlin. That's true. But f throughout the rest of this film, he doesn't really fuck with framing devices and and no. uh, showing us where we are. So, so suddenly showing us where we are, I guess, is a bit a bit jarring. I suppose. Yeah, maybe. And I think along this theme, along with what you're saying about the uh, some of the other gaps and the kind of the I don't know narrative shortcomings uh to, to echo what i said again earlier um that sequence with masha with the girl like that doesn't have anything to do with the movie more or less well, i wanted to talk about that as well yeah it, it, it kind of you could excise that plot because the thing is is i was and i was conscious of this while watching those sequences i was thinking well this is about Ivan's childhood, right? That's the title of the movie. We're following this kid. This kid mm -hmm. has nothing to do with these scenes and isn't in them. And it mm -hmm. seemed to me like the kind of movie where you would want to stick very closely to that protagonist, scenes that protagonist's got some kind of view of, you know. But again, yeah, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed those scenes. So it's not, to yeah. me, it didn't bother me. So, yeah, I kind of agree. I think that those scenes were uh, misplaced. Um, and well, I'm not saying you're saying they're misplaced, but to carry on from what you said, yeah. I didn't like those scenes very much. Uh, technically, they were really impressive, like the moment when she's walking up the, the tree trunk and you're mm. watching her steps and it's all that like quick cutting and really beautiful camera work. I was like, oh, wow, this is technically really well done. Um, but I was like, why are we here? And why, more importantly than that, because I don't mind if a film goes off of another kind of character for a while, um, where is this leading? And the answer is nowhere. Um, there's no real need for her to be in there. There's no resolution to her storyline. They're not really conveying much of a theme with her character. And if they're trying to, and they're trying to make some commentary, uh, I think it fell very short. The other thing mm. I would say about those scenes is I didn't particularly feel very comfortable during the scene with the, the colonel or the higher up official. Obviously, I don't think the film is meant to be saying no. all this is sexy. But I also... It was just, it was not very enjoyable. I didn't feel comfortable during those scenes. It was a bit like, I don't really want to watch this. Um, but I, I like those scenes in, in of themselves. I just don't know if they suit the rest of the film. Because, like I say, I really enjoyed the woman's experience in that sequence where clearly she's uncomfortable and she wants to leave. Mm -hmm. And then you get that sequence I talked about where she's running away and you have the music and the panting through the forest. Mm -hmm. And then, like I say, the echo back to that a few minutes later after meeting the other guy. I really like all of that. It almost functions as a kind of short film within the middle of this film. But yeah, it doesn't go well, anywhere else in this film, really. I mean, yeah, there's that exactly. moment where she comes back later and she's like, oh, I just came to say bye because I'm going. And it's like, okay. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I, I guess, I guess that's I, good. I, I mean, that. <laughs> like, I know I, you were saying what you were saying like it's nice to have some nicer moments to counterpoint the darkness but you could just do some nicer moments with ivan it didn't need to be with her you know yeah i mean i i wonder as well and again there's no way of for me to prove this necessarily I, I don't know but in the same way to you talking about maybe the studio wanted the victory in berlin i don't know the the kind of the nuances of kind of how trailers and things were done in, in sixties Russia, but maybe they needed to throw in a kiss and a, and a woman in there to, maybe. to sort of say, Hey, Hey, every, this is for everyone. This is yeah, the romance. Maybe. Ivan's childhood, romance, <laughs> war. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you Could know? very maybe, well be. Maybe Could they needed well to be. throw those, those bits into the bag and shape them around, you know? Yeah. Um, and also as, as is mentioned in that little documentary as well, he kind of in a very Kubrick, fashion seems to not really care what the writers had done and then just do yeah. what he wanted yeah. to do uh, yeah. that seems to have been a thing him, saying, yeah that seems to have been a thing they said about his career in general that that's one of the ways his films got kind of greenlit and then why he had yeah. trouble with them afterwards because yeah. the final product didn't necessarily reflect the script that had been approved by the like yeah, the film yeah, they signed up yeah. and um and i wonder maybe some of those things that seem to be misplaced or narrative shortcomings whether they're an unholy amalgam between whatever was originally on the page and whatever he's ended up doing like maybe there was Perhaps. a payoff either that woman wasn't there originally 
or she was, and there was a payoff, you know, yeah. and maybe that's something in there's been lost. I yeah, maybe, maybe it's difficult to tell, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's it's hard, but I I really liked it. I know on um, you know, giving films star ratings to me personally, not necessarily doesn't really mean anything, but but to, to give it a context of just that we both enjoyed it. I mean, on Letterbox, you gave it three and a half, I gave mm -hmm. it four. You know, yeah. so we both we both liked it. <laughs> Yeah, like, and it's and definitely I, a film. I liked it slightly more than you, but we both yeah, really like the film. Yeah, and it's definitely a film because <laughs> some of the moments are some of the best things I've ever seen. But then there yeah. were just some other moments where I was like either bored or just taken out of the movie or whatever. And it's the kind of film I could easily see going up to a four stars out of five for me at some point, maybe with a rewatch. I will just say finally before we leave today, uh, the other thing that took me out a little bit was just that sometimes when it focused more on the conventional kind of war epic mm. or war movie uh, elements, I found myself a little a little um, easily distracted as well. I'm not going to use the B word, um, but they, they weren't as interesting for me either. And I, I'm hoping as we go through this journey that he leaves those kind of narrative uh, uh, trappings behind and we get more of the kind of lyrical, dreamy, yeah. uh, atmospheric stuff. Because I felt like at times there was the tension between those two things in this film. And maybe like you said at the beginning, that could be because this was his first film and it was very much yeah. a studio gun for hire kind of job. And as we go further through his filmography, it's going to get more. That tension will dissipate somewhat. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, I'm I'm wondering how I'll react to that because, for example, you like David Lynch and I don't mm -hmm. like David Lynch. Yeah, and I am not necessarily psyched about the idea of watching three-hour films that are all just kind of imagery and poetry. You know, yeah. I like there to be a bit more. I don't know. I don't want to say like a story. I just sound no, like but I know what you mean, idiot. though. But yeah, for me, I, there's a there's a balance as well. It's got to yeah. be a balance. But I, we'll see. I, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm intrigued. I, I'm expecting to really like his films based on this. Yeah, but me too. we'll it's a good see. Start. Yeah, it's a really good start. Um, I would say that I'm not necessarily as keen to lose the banal aspects of it because my, I think my favorite, one of my favorite sort of things in movies, like we talked about Contagion before we recorded mm -hmm. this, and one of the reasons I love that movie so much, and one of the things you found maybe detracting from it slightly, was the fact that it is an extremely banal film by design. Yeah. It, is, it is just very boring professional people doing their job, <laughs> talking very dryly about their job. And yeah. I love that. Like, um, I, I love there's a, there's a Romanian film from like 10 years ago called Police Adjective. Oh, where yeah, yeah. It's, just a, it's, it's just a policeman being bored doing this job of watching this boy's house and then there's an extended sequence at the end where he goes through i think it's at the end or midpoint where he goes through the dictionary and, and starts reading to his superior the definition of police and, and, and trying to find out if what he's doing is police work and they have this conversation about words <laughs> i just love like that is so objectively that is so boring I well, absolutely love it. So, we'll, so we'll, we'll find out in the next, in the coming weeks, whether you, you get a scene like that from a yeah. Tarkovsky film. Well, Something tells me no, but you never yeah, know with this guy. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> so the next one is, um, is uh, Andre Rublev. Andre Rublev, yes, which yeah. is, I think, three hours and 20 minutes, right? Yeah. So I'll probably be watching that at uh, some point this weekend, if I'm yeah. honest. Um, maybe in two parts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'll get a review up for you guys uh, again in this format live. Uh, at some point next week. Shall we do? I don't. Obviously, we're we're wrapping up, so I don't want to mm -hmm. uh, draw all this out much longer. But do you want to? Do you want to give a prediction? <laughs> <laughs> like how you're feeling about it? Because I because I'm going to say off the bat here that um, that the idea that it's over three hours long. <laughs> It's not. I'm not psyched about it. I, yeah, I'm, I'll I'm be not, honest. I'm not writing it off. Like I'm. I'm. I'm sure it's going to be good, but it it's going to require me to sort of to go. Oh, okay, I better watch it now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll both be having that conversation like afternoon on Saturday, probably. Like, have you watched it yet? No. Yeah. No, yeah oh, no. no. But yeah, no. I've got a feeling that I'm going to really like some of it, and I think it's going to be a bit more historical um, based and a bit more. Yeah. Um, because it is a biography, I think, isn't it? Okay, I'm, um, I'm really going in blind on so, this film. So there's going to be some interesting aspects that way, but I've got a feeling it's going to be one of my least favourites from his filmography. Like, I think it's still going to be good, but I don't think I'm going to love it. But tune in next week and you'll find out. Indeed. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, let, us, this uh, format. 
let us know what you think of this this crazy format. This is the first time I think either of us have done anything like this. So mm -hmm. uh, do you want to see more hashtag content like this? Uh, or uh, or would you rather we stick to just the audio? Yeah. <laughs> tell us that. <laughs> tell us that in a nice way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'd yeah let us down gently. You. Let us down gently. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let us know what you think of this format. Um, yeah. Yeah, let us know what you think of Ivan's childhood, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, watch along with us. <laughs>